When it comes to bad history, sometimes people will incorrectly interpret sources or use faulty sources and just get it wrong. Sometimes people will cite as little or vaguely as possible to make a theory of theirs seem plausible or true. Then sometimes they just make it up. Nowadays, it's a lot harder to just flat out make up history and have it go places. Sure, you can fool some people, but if I were to make a book that completely made up a history of a place, it would easily be torn apart and it wouldn't sell millions of copies. But making stuff up wasn't just in ancient and medieval times. And for this episode, we're going to talk about a pseudo-historical work from 1704 by George Salmanazar called An Historical and Geographical Description of Formosa, an Island Subject to the Emperor of Japan. But before we get into the specifics on why this book was a horrible book, let's talk about the exact opposite, and that would be Awesome Wallets. This video is sponsored by Ridge Wallets, a company that makes high-quality metal wallets with a really simple and sleek design. In fact, they're such high quality that the metal wallets actually prevent electronic stealing of your information, because, yeah, we actually live in a world where that can happen, and your leather wallets aren't good enough. I've had no complaints with my wallet, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it too. So be sure to click the link in the description and use the code IMPORER to get 10% off your new wallet. Thanks to Ridge for once again sponsoring this video. Okay, so who is George Salmanazar? Well, for one thing, George Salmanazar isn't his birth name and we don't know what it actually is. Even when he wrote a memoir later in his life, he kept it a secret. We also don't know his exact birth year, but we've narrowed it down to the early 1680s or so. As for where he was born, we know it was somewhere in southern France. Now, why do we know so little about this man? Well, he kept a lot of it a secret because he had a knack for faking his identity. He would constantly pretend he would be someone from a foreign land on pilgrimage to Rome so he could get cheaper traveling. He apparently got in trouble in southern France for pretending to be Irish, but real Irishmen on their way to Rome knew more about Ireland than he did and were able to call him out on it. Eventually, he decided to pretend to be Formosan, for those who don't know, Formosa used to be the name for Taiwan. To act like he was Formosan, he would purposefully eat weird foods and claim to worship the sun and the moon to come off as a bizarre foreigner. In 1702, he went to a Scottish priest and pretended to convert to Anglican Christianity and was christened as George Salmanazar, apparently the last name being a version of the biblical Assyrian king Shalmaneser which is kind of a weird biblical name to choose, but whatever. Afterwards, he moved on to London and became a celebrity as being supposedly the first Formosan to visit Europe, and they enjoyed him as a supposedly exotic foreigner. George also pretended to be very anti-Catholic, which was popular at the time. Being now a celebrity, George decided to go further and in 1704 published a book about Formosa's history and culture titled An Historical and Geographical Description of Formosa, an Island Subject to the Emperor of Japan. Now, I know that this is bad history and not bad cultural education, but this book still talked about Taiwan's supposed history and sometimes used it to explain Taiwan's supposed culture. So this is definitely a false historical manuscript in part, as much as a false cultural one. And I mean absolutely false. Literally everything in this book is made up other than the island's name and location and a few super tiny details. If you don't believe me, I have a link to the online full English text of the book in the description, but I'm going to show show you some of the many awful things in this book in this video. So the first several pages are about his conversion to Anglicanism, so not much in here regards to history or culture. But then on page 145, he finally gets to describing the island itself. He says that Formosa in the native language is God Avia, which means beautiful island. Now, the actual name for Formosa in the native language is, well, Taiwan. Ironically though, Ila Formosa means beautiful island in Portuguese, so his made-up name for it isn't even different than the European name for it. He also claims China called it Pacando, but that seems to be made up entirely as well as I couldn't find any instance of that. He then goes over a relatively recent history of the island. Salmanazar describes that Formosa was ruled by a king who listened to representatives from different regions of Formosa's domains. So, a parliamentary monarchy, like England, where he's publishing the book. Anyway, the system was in place for up to 200 years ago, as he put it, in which case that would be roughly the year 1500 based on the book's publishing date. Around that time, the Emperor of Tartary invaded the island and ruled it for three generations. Now, 
Obviously, there is no Empire of Tartary, and this invasion never happened. But after doing some research, I did learn something interesting. Apparently around this time period, Tartary was a generic name Europeans used for the lower Siberian, Mongolian, and Manchurian areas of Asia. But it was especially used for Manchuria by Jesuit missionaries. Neither the Mongols nor the Manchurians invaded Taiwan in 1500. But funnily enough, the Qing Dynasty of China which is the Manchurian dynasty of China, invaded Taiwan and took it over in 1683. So in that sense, you could say the, quote, Emperor of Tartary invaded Formosa, but that was more 20 years before this book's published date rather than 200. It's almost irritating to know he could have made his false history a bit more convincing just by thinking of details like that. So then, 70 years after this fake conquest, the third emperor was extra tyrannical, and more specifically suppressed the local religion, which caused the natives to take up arms and drive them out. Again, a lot of this just really provokes recent European history at this time, doesn't it? It's as if he was using that as a trope to make the book relatable and sell more. Hmm. So, the original day of government is restored, and that lasted for another 70 years. This would bring us to the year 1640 or so, and this is when he said the arrival of the Dutch occurred. Now, while the Dutch did come to colonize Taiwan for a brief moment, he's still a bit wrong here. The Dutch colonized parts of Taiwan in the 1620s, and in fact Spain did too, around the same time. And eventually the Spanish disappeared by the 1640s and the Dutch controlled the coasts of Taiwan for a few decades until the 1660s. So unless he's being very vague with his dates like 200 years ago and three generations later, which is possible. This is just another lazy mistake. I know he's making up the whole thing, but come on, man, just try a little bit harder. He then mentions the Chinese takeover of Taiwan, you know, the Qing Dynasty. But instead of it being them taking over the island and that being the end of the story, like it was at the time, he claimed the Chinese left and preserved the independent governing system there. But that is completely false, as by the time of this book's publishing, the Qing Dynasty still controlled Formosa slash Taiwan, and they would until 1895, when it would be taken by Japan. Oh boy, but it's not over yet. He then claimed there was a so-called villain, as he put it, named Mariandanu, who would eventually acquire favor with the Japanese emperor and empress, but plotted to kill them both. The supposed emperor he killed was Emperor Chazajin, which is not only a made-up emperor, but that doesn't even sound Japanese. Anyway, Mariandanu eventually, after killing them, acquired the imperial throne for himself. He then essentially bullied his way into making Formosa a puppet, and installed his own puppet king. This. Samanazar claimed, is the present situation. This part baffles me the most. He got away with making up not only the history of Taiwan, but even lied about the current situation. Taiwan was still under the control of China at this time. It's just so amazing he was able to publish this without any problems, even in the 18th century. The rest of this book is him making up Taiwanese culture, like how the island is a paradise yet technologically behind, they all worship a sun god, only wear loincloths but made out of gold, yada yada. The most interesting thing he made up entirely was the Formosan alphabet and language. He gave a few examples of things such as the Lord's Prayer in that supposed language, but just like everything else in the book, that was made up. And he got away with it. He continued to be a celebrity for a few years over this. He was even offered to teach Taiwanese history and culture at Oxford. But some of you may have been wondering this entire video about something that's fairly obvious. This guy was born in southern France, not Taiwan. As you can see by his depictions, he did not look like he was from Taiwan. He wasn't in any way Taiwanese whether through ancestry, ethnicity, or even just by looks. So how did he get over the idea that he didn't look Taiwanese? He claimed that upper-class Formosans lived underground and therefore did not get a lot of sunlight to darken their skin. 
No, I'm not joking. That was his actual excuse. And most people bought it. And since this time period was before mass public schooling, the internet, public libraries, or anything like that, a lot of people were dumb enough to believe it. The one group that constantly heckled him were Jesuit missionaries, as they had actually been to Taiwan. But because England had high anti-Catholic bias at the time, and because George made a big deal about converting to Anglicanism, they just dismissed it as a way to try to ruin his reputation which is kind of ironic. Amazingly, in 1706, just a few years into his stardom, he confessed that he made it all up. He didn't get punished, penalized, or anything. The skeptics went, see, we told you, and the average person had already moved on to the next big thing. Without television or social media, he just went on to have a relatively simple life. At one point, he began publishing legitimate geography books in which he fittingly dispelled myths about Formosa that he himself invented. In fact, the made-up alphabet for the Formosan language that he created would sometimes appear in language textbooks for a few decades after he confessed that it was all made up, which shows how important it is to fight against misinformation. He also later on in his life tried to write intentional fiction, but apparently sucked at it and he couldn't get published. Then towards the end of his life, he made a biography confessing how he tricked everyone about the whole Formosan thing, but never revealing his original birth name. So yeah, George Salmanazar is quite a person, and by his own admission, his famous work was a perfect example of bad history. Thanks for watching the video, and if you'd like to see more bad history episodes, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and all of that good stuff. But also be sure to help support this channel through my Patreon, where you can get earlier video access or your name displayed at the end of the video. Every donation is greatly appreciated. I'm Emperor Tiger Star, and I'll see you guys next time.